Our group proposes that we should run another STEM Fest in order to raise money for cure for cam in accordance with the mission statement of STEM Cells. The mission statement is that STEM Cells is a student-led organization that aims to raise money for a meaningful charity that is chosen by each STEM Academy class. In this video, we will tell you how ste what STEM Fest is, how it strives to accomplish this goal of raising money for Cure for Cam, how much we think it will cost to run STEM Fest, and we will also discuss the primary market research that led us to this cost projection, and discuss our marketing plan in order to market STEM, STEM Fest to our target market, which is the students of the STEM Academy. The charity we have chosen to raise money for is Cure for Cam because it is a charity that is close to the heart of Downingtown. And according to its website, it strives to raise community awareness concerning and supports the development of new and more, more humane therapies for childhood cancer. We hope to raise money for this charity through STEM Fest, which is a fun-filled social school event in which students will be able to team up with friends while engaging in some friendly competition against other teams for in a series of activities. The activities that will be included in STEM Fest will be discussed later in this video. We suggest that the teams should be of five to 10 people and that the event should be four hours long. During this time, the activities will be run on a half an hour interval, meaning there will be a chance for eight activities per team. We propose that the event takes place on Thursday, June 26th, and we can start this event during advisory. And we can start either the setup, of, the setup of the event during advisory, or we can start the actual event during advisory. But the point of this is that students would then be able to stay after school and wouldn't need a ride back to the STEM Academy, which would make it easier for, to get more students to participate in this fun-filled event for a good cause. We propose that the tickets should be $15 per person. Briefly discussing the uh, events that will be held at STEM Fest. All right, so Super Smash Bros, uh, that's a video game, and it's a, an event where people play against each other um, in large groups, and people can be onlookers as well and rotate around. Um, now, we, the materials you need for this event will be a GameCube and a Wii U, uh, our group members have these systems, so that's a non-cost, very viable solution, and it's very cost-effective. Uh, this would happen in teams of four to eight students. Uh, however, we propose that three to four students of each group participate uh, at once in a Smash Bros. tournament, and while the other members cheer on or just admire the other teammates. Uh, this will take place in a classroom on the first floor somewhere. Um, prior before prior to the event, we need to check the um, we need to check the smart boards, make sure they're functioning properly, get clearance from the office, and yeah, and that's it. And it's a zero cost, uh, very cost effective strategy and event, <coughs> and it's definitely going to uh, create a large turnout because it worked last year. Many many people showed up to it. And it's a very popular event that will bring us a lot of uh, popularity and um, it will attract a lot of business. So the next event is Mario Kart, which is played on the Wii. This can host up to eight people. However, more people can obviously be there waiting in line or watching. Our me are the members of our group have the materials needed for this event? as well as the controllers for this event and it'll be done in a first in a classroom on the first floor as well again we have to check the smart boards make sure they're functioning and they they've been checked and check with the office to figure out if where we should do it uh this is also a cost effective event because it's free we have all the materials and yeah dodgeball that's another event that we're going to be planning for the stem uh, fest we we would get the dodgeballs from the STEM gym, or we could take them from West. We've already uh, talked to the West uh, gym director, athletic director, and he said that'd be okay. Uh, duct tape is also a necessity. However, that would cost you know less than ten dollars, um, 
and that's very doable in the profit margin that we have or are expecting. Um, we need duct tape to be placed to divide the court and the you know the arena for which it is played in, and we do this so that no student uh, would get hurt or go out of the borderline, the border. Excuse me. This would happen in the courtyard, of course. Uh, I just realized this cut off the. Uh, anyway, uh, main points are that this event would take out this event. This event would take place outside in the courtyard, and we need the tables to be moved in order for it to be safe environment to play. And the janitorial staff could do this during school uh, or after school, since the day that this takes place will more than likely be a five through seven day. So they could do it during seminar, and we wouldn't have to worry about. Uh, any pain. However, uh, that's also a very viable possibility. So, the, another event that we're going to be doing is a maze in the Knowledge Commons, and we'll need a tarp and poles. Uh, this is necessary to set up the maze. Um, a roll of tarp we researched costs about thirty to fifty dollars, and the poles cost about thirty dollars. And Unless in donation can be found prior to the event, um, we can just cut in from our revenue, um, which is very, very possible, very doable, and it's it's a it's a very inexpensive event. Um, there are going to be tables and chairs in the Knowledge Commons that would also have to be moved for this event. However, that's no problem because the janitorial staff are there for us. Uh, we talk to them. Uh, they say that's fine. Uh, if they have time to do it during school, or we could pay them after school. Uh, the rate is discussed later on in the expensive uh, section of this uh, presentation. Uh, so, yeah, it would, this would more than likely take place on May 26th after school. So the janitors could do this um, without getting paid extra, more than likely. Uh, some other events are a prompt pitch or open mic situation where people come uh, and express whatever they want to express, whether it be music, poetry, speech. Uh, this would be more than likely done on the stage. It's still debatable, but that's not a big issue because we're, you know, we're flexible, <clears throat> and I'm sure, you know, the school will be flexible with this since we don't really need much space. We could use a classroom, so. Uh, we propose that this will be done in the auditorium, however. And, yeah, so the uh, we'll also do a treasure hunt, uh, clue hunt. Um, and, like, a, an escape the room situation. This will be uh, cost-effective. Also, the impromptu pitch will also be cost-effective. We don't need anything for that. No materials, really. Besides a microphone, which is provided to us for free by the school. The... Um, we'd also get, for the treasure hunt and clue hunt, we'd get, um, you know, we wouldn't need anything for that. So, uh, that would take place in a classroom in the, in the first floor. Now, another event is, would be board games and card games. We have all of these materials, a variety of board games. Um, in our group, in the, my business uh, group, we have the people there have uh, these materials. We could bring them in for free, so it's a cost-effective strategy, and it would take place in a room in the front, in the first floor. Now, the most exciting event, in my opinion, is the laser tag. That'll probably get the most attention, and it'll be a really fun event, and it'll turn on a lot of people. It's very attractive. Uh, just because it's kind of unique for events like this, and it's a lot of fun. So this would take place in the, in the gymnasium, the gym. In order to figure out many of the logistical aspects of this event, we sought to test the market on various subjects to see exactly how well our ideas lined up with the rest of the STEM Academy. In order to do this, we generated a survey consisting of five questions pertaining to the events that were being planned, the pricing of the event for any participants, and what date and day and time that our market would feel comfortable attending the event. 
The first question gave various examples of the activities which STEM Cells was planning on holding at STEM Fest, including large-scale team activities such as laser tag and dodgeball, to video games and card games. By distributing the survey, we were able to gauge the interest of those in our market on what activities they would like to be involved with. Through this, we found that the majority of the market wanted video games, laser tag, and dodgeball, with some support for the smaller activities as well. Through this, we can now prioritize time and effort to the activities that we have shown to be able to sell to our market. Through the survey, we also sought the opinions on exactly what the average participant would be willing to pay to get into STEM Fest. This way, we could better understand what type of budget and profit margins we would be working with should the event occur. Through this, we found that by giving them the option of $10 to $20 for a ticket, the average acceptable price was about $15 per person. This gave necessary information to put together a proper financial plan for the project. Lastly, we sought to find out the best time to host STEM Fest. We knew the event would take place on May 26 after IB exams, but we wanted to know how long people would want to, the event to go on, what day of the week, and when it should start. We did this in order to find out which is the best time in which to host the event in order to maximize participation and revenue from the event. Through the survey, we found that on average, people wanted to be on it on the weekend as a majority, as well as it lasting around four hours and starting sometime in the afternoon rather than morning or night. Our primary market research allowed us to put together all this information to best fit our logistical and financial aspects of STEM Fest and gave a good look as to what our market is expecting of the event. Hi everyone, my name is Santina and I'm going to be talking to you today about the marketing plan for STEM Fest. Our marketing plan is a three phase plan and it's designed to hit our target audience, which is the students of the Downingtown STEM Academy. And we wanna do this through every possible means of communication. The point of having three faces is basically so that we can get repetition in. The more that we repeat this and expose it to the audience and our target audience, the people of STEM, the more that they will remember the event exists and even bring it up in conversations with their friends. In the first phase of our plan, we plan to initially start marketing our project by releasing a survey on Schoology regarding certain logistics on the event. The survey will ask questions regarding which day works best, what kind of events or activities people would like to see at SEMFest, and more. And through the survey, we simply aim to get that first small taste out to the public. This way, once the second and third phases of the marketing plan occur, people that saw the survey initially will remember the survey and the repeated exposure will make them want to sign up and also more likely to participate. That was phase one. And then phase two, in the second phase of marketing, of our marketing plan, we also plan to use social media. We plan to post on Facebook, since a lot of students have Facebook accounts, but mainly we plan to post on Schoology, since every student of the STEM Academy is ensured to see that Schoology post, since we all use Schoology. So we plan to get that out through Mr. Ruff on the STEM Student Life page to hit as many students as possible. By posting on Facebook and Schoology, we are maximizing online exposure of STEM Fest. Phase three will consist of marketing through STEM Fest registration. And mainly what this includes is that we're gonna make a poster and we're going to hang it outside. When people come in to, to the STEM Academy, you'll have a poster up and we'll be hanging out flyers. And we're also gonna have the registration table outside of the student commons where we have the poster again. And not only are we gonna require all business students in the class to make a team to encourage participation, but also we believe that by having that poster out next to our registration table, students will be drawn in and it will make them more likely to sign up. So those are the three phases of the marketing plan and we want to gain the most participation possible through those phases. While there may be a lot of other benefits to hosting STEM Best at our school, I'm going to be explaining a little bit more of the bottom line what it can do for us in terms of revenue, expenses, and most importantly, what can we expect to have 
as a donation to Camathon, the charity of our choice. Without walking, you threw up by reading every single uh, row. And let me explain a little bit more about how every uh, uh, piece of this very thoroughly calculated estimation was made. So, first of all, we have revenue, which is based from two to three hundred participants at fifteen dollars for admission. And we, as a group, decided on fifteen dollars a ticket collectively through a variety of through a variety of for a variety of different reasons. Um, author group members have gotten to that, and our uh, anticipated participation. Um. The rates are at two to three hundred participants, which we calculated through uh, um, primary market research as well as other market research that other group members have talked about. So, as a general revenue, I've shown you this slide to break it down a little bit more, as in uh, just to get a better understanding of per participant how much can we stand to make, uh, so we can understand the ranges. And as we can see, uh, we stand to make three to four and a half thousand dollars in revenue uh, from two to three hundred different participants. And going through our expenses, um, we decided a laser tag would be uh, one of the main focuses of this whole event. And it would be worth it to invest a lot of money into it because of the significance it would have in marketing and as a reason for people to actually come to this event. It was also known to be very successful and a memorable event based on uh, market research for prior participants of this event. So we anticipate uh, laser tag took off from $299 to $599 based on research from a company uh, to use the same company that was used in prior years for this event. Most likely, it will cost $599 based on the time we want it, which would be a weekend uh, or Friday night when more people would be available, as well as for a longer period of time, which would cost $599 as opposed to the more discounted rates, which are available during other times of the week. Other games, we only anticipate the maze costing $60 to $80, and we think everything else could be made uh, uh, at in, insignificant costs and or uh, uh, free of charge to us or just in their nature, they wouldn't incur a cost. Using the building, we would have to use custodial staff. Uh, um, we believe this is a requirement of the school and to host events there. So we anticipate this costing in ninety to one hundred fifty dollars, depending on the length of the event, which hasn't been set in stone yet. So from three to five hours, that's ninety to one hundred and fifty dollars. For food, let me get in a little more detail. For logistical reasons, ordering a large amount of pizzas is probably the easiest way to go for this particular event. So, for two to three hundred uh, participants, we can anticipate 25 to 38 pizzas, which would cost us between 25 to $250 and $380. We believe that food would be an important part of this event because it would, it would encourage people to stay longer, uh, try more things out, and therefore incur a higher satisfaction rate. Uh, for drinks, uh, safety is definitely important, as well as just to go with food. So we will just go with a low-cost, healthy option of water at around $2.80 per cases, or $28 per 10 cases, which would be about 350 bottles of water, um, which is more than the anticipated amount of people. Um, so one full-size water bottle per person should be ample. More than that, we have a surplus. And it's definitely a low-cost item compared to the other expenses. So even if we were to buy another few case or two, it wouldn't significantly alter our expenses. Other staff, uh, we may have to have security or, for some other reasons, extra custodial staff. For whatever reason, we put $100 to $150 as more of a, a safety range for other staff we may need. So this brings uh, food, drinks, uh, our games, and building usage, building usages 
to an expense to uh, the final expense range of eight hundred twenty nine to thirteen hundred and eighty dollars. I then added a safety barrier of twenty percent of which would be one hundred sixty six to two hundred and seventy six uh, U S dollars, in order to uh, obviously have a safety range just in case we miscalculated something or there's more participants than expected, or uh, price fluctuations uh, affect how much we spend on particular items. So even though we estimated on the high range for everything, it's even better uh, for a successful business and financial model to be on the safe side of things when you're planning them out. So just in case something goes wrong, we know in the worst case we're not losing money. So this brings our total expenses to around a thousand to six seventeen hundred dollars at the high end, uh, and our surplus range. So if we subtract that from the revenue, um, so about three thousand minus nine hundred, nine hundred ninety around two thousand six, and then we have four and a half thousand minus twenty hundred fifty. I mean, the minus sixteen hundred fifty, which would be around twenty eight hundred fifty dollars. Uh, so the range of surplus, which is the money that at the end of the event after we take out all our expenses and pay everyone, the we can anticipate to donate to our chosen charity would be around two thousand to twenty eight hundred dollars, which would significantly benefit our cause. Thank you. All right. In conclusion, STEM Fest is a large interactive event for students and teachers and even parents alike. It brings everyone together for fun, active uh, time and participation to benefit a great cause as Care for Cam. Through our primary market research, we were able to determine that probably well over 200 people at the very least would be attending the event, giving us what we estimated in over a thousand dollars of uh, donation money going to Cure for Cam. Not only this, but through our marketing plan, we'd hopefully be able to bring in even more uh, participants to Cure to STEM Fest by initiating three individual phases, starting with uh, the one that Santina mentioned on the survey that we used for our um, primary market research would be sent out to more students be sent out uh, to the STEM Student Life page, the second being the uh, Facebook and uh, social network site posts, and the third being the final registration as well as flyers and posters. Through this, we hope to get even more people, hopefully even a majority of the uh, school if possible, and that would be an amazing event. We'd be looking at well into $3,000 if more than, um, I believe, if more than 400 people, only half of the school, were able to uh, participate. And thus, in conclusion, it's making, it only makes sense that this is an extremely lucrative, while complicated, uh, logistically, it is an extremely lucrative and very fun event that can be had at STEM again. We had it in years past, and only because of some complications in timing did it not partake again, and we hope to fix that and bring it back this year.